Unit 9. Page 99. Exercise C. Spotlight. Read and listen to a conversation about a mystery. Notice the spotlighted language. Have you been keeping up with all the news about that mission military jet? Yeah, very mysterious, don't you think? The whole thing doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I mean, how can a military plane just vanish without a trace over the Mediterranean Sea? Where's the evidence of a crash? I have no idea, but apparently there was bad weather. Most likely the pilot lost control and it crashed into the water. They claim that's the probable explanation, but in my opinion they're barking up the wrong tree. What do you mean? Well, I know I'm going out on a limb with this, but the plane might have been taken over by someone and flown to a secret location. Oh, come on. How could anyone take over a military plane? You don't really buy that, do you? Why not? Rumor has it that there were two high-level government scientists aboard. Maybe someone wanted the information they might have had. I'm sorry, but that seems really far-fetched to me. It's just not believable. There's no question the plane crashed. The only question is where. Page 100. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Degrees of certainty. Read and listen. Very certain. Clearly she got stuck in traffic. It's obvious that she got stuck in traffic. There's no question that she got stuck in traffic. Almost certain. Most likely she got stuck in traffic. Probably she got stuck in traffic. I'll bet she got stuck in traffic. I suppose she got stuck in traffic. Not certain. Maybe she got stuck in traffic. It's possible that she got stuck in traffic. I wonder if she got stuck in traffic. Page 100. Exercise B. Listen to activate vocabulary. Into each conversation and circle the phrase that best completes the statement. Then explain your choices. Conversation 1. Her parents grounded her. They grounded her? That's surprising. She's not the kind of kid who misbehaves. Well, she must have done something. Her parents told her she has to stay home all this week. I wonder what she did. Maybe she stayed out after her curfew. I know her parents are pretty strict about that. Could be, but it's still surprising. Jade is usually such a good kid. Conversation 2. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But I just got off the phone with Jack. Apparently he's in financial trouble. Your brother? How can that be? He's got a great job. Yeah, but he just told me he's drowning in debt, and he's been losing sleep worrying about it. Well, I can't say I'm totally surprised. It's obvious that he's pretty impulsive about his spending. Well, there's no question that's a big part of the problem now. Conversation 3. Did you hear that Linda got her kids a puppy? Are you serious? I know the kids were asking for one, but she told us there was no way she would ever agree to that. That's true. She said a puppy was just too high maintenance and that they couldn't have one in their small apartment. But I suppose she decided that raising a puppy would be good for them. I don't think that's it. She's a lot more lenient with her kids than we are. Clearly she just gave them what they wanted. Page 101. Now you can. Exercise A. Conversation Spotlight. Read and listen. Notice the spotlighted conversation strategies. I wonder where Stacy is. She said she'd be here by 10. Do you think something happened? No idea. But I'm sure it's nothing. I'll bet she got stuck in traffic. I suppose you're right. But I'm surprised she hasn't called. I am too. There must be a good explanation. Maybe she left her phone at home. Could be. I forget mine all the time. No idea. No clue. Beats me. Could be. Maybe. I suppose. Page 102. Exercise B. Grammar Spotlight. Read about Rapa Nui. Notice the spotlighted grammar. Island of Mystery. 
Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, is the most remote inhabited island in the world. Its huge stone figures, called moai, are world famous, but their origin, as well as much of the island's history, is shrouded in mystery. Experts believe the stone figures may have been used to establish religious and political authority and power, but no one knows for sure. Islanders moved a total of 540 figures across the island, some as far as 22 kilometers. Several experts believe the moai could have been walked upright, using ropes to rock the figures back and forth. Others theorize the islanders must have laid the figures down flat and rolled them over logs. They point out that moving each figure could not have been accomplished without the help of 70 or more people and probably took days to achieve. In the early 20th century, Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl noticed cultural similarities between the people on Rapa Nui and the Incas in Peru. He argued that the island might have been inhabited by people who came in boats from South America. To prove it was possible, he successfully sailed a raft called the Contiki on that route. However, experts citing more recent DNA evidence confirmed that the original inhabitants had to have sailed from Polynesia, which lies to the west. The first arrivals most likely found an inviting habitat lush with palm forests. However, today, the native trees are extinct. Some experts believe that as the population of this small island increased, trees must have been cut down to build houses and boats and to make logs for moving the huge moai. These are some of the theories about Rapa Nui, its stone figures, and the people who created them. Perhaps someday we will learn all the answers. Page 102. Pronunciation Booster. Exercise A. Listen and practice. 1. They could have been killed. 2. They might have been lost. 3. They must have been moved. 4. They may have been discovered. 5. They had to have been stolen. 6. They might not have been lost. 7. They must not have been moved. Exercise B. Underline where you think the words should be linked and which sounds should be reduced. 1. The damage may have been caused by a storm. 2. The building could have been destroyed by a fire. 3. The gold figures couldn't have been stolen. 4. The stone statues must have been moved using animals. 5. The drawings must not have been discovered until later. 6. The islands had to have been inhabited by Polynesians. 7. The secrets of Rapa Nui might not have been lost. Now practice reading each sentence aloud, paying attention to reductions. Listen to check. Page 104. Exercise B. Reading. Read the article. Which details do you think are the most questionable or the least believable? The Roswell Incident On June 25, 1947, pilot Kenneth Arnold was flying a plane in the northwest of the U.S. when he saw something strange, objects that looked like plates or saucers flying across the sky like a small flock of birds. His story led to numerous other news stories in which people claimed to have seen similar unidentified flying objects, UFOs, or flying saucers. Shortly after, on July 8th, a secret military balloon crashed near Roswell, New Mexico in the southwest. However, the local newspaper reported that a flying saucer had crashed, and the news media from all over demanded more information. Because the balloon was a secret, the military made an official announcement that the object that had crashed was just an ordinary weather balloon. No one questioned that story for more than 30 years until 1978. UFO lecturer Stanton Friedman interviewed a man who claimed to have seen something stranger than a weather balloon in the wreckage of the 1947 crash, and the story of a flying saucer was reborn. Although versions of that story differ, 
Most people who believe there was a military conspiracy to hide the truth agree on these basic details. A flying saucer crashed near Roswell in 1947. And because it didn't want anyone to know the truth, the military kept the incident top secret and continues to do so today. However, many details have been added to the story over the years. Eleven additional crash sites have been identified. While some people claim that alien beings from other planets must have been captured alive and imprisoned by the military in a secret location, others believe that aliens might have died in the crash and were most likely being kept frozen for research. Roswell conspiracy fans meet at annual conferences to debate the various versions. The military eventually admitted that it had been a secret military balloon. However, Roswell experts claim to have interviewed hundreds of witnesses who say they saw evidence of a flying saucer, proving, therefore, that the conspiracy theory must be true. B.D. Gildenberg, who has examined such claims, believes that the Roswell conspiracy stories are a hoax, the world's most famous, most exhaustively investigated, and most thoroughly debunked UFO claim. Other skeptics of the conspiracy, who accept the military's version, point out that all the interviews occurred more than 30 years after the crash and that many of the statements made in the interviews were highly questionable. For example, one witness's name was changed after it became clear that she didn't exist. Furthermore, witnesses often seemed to confuse details with military plane crashes that had occurred in the area at about the same time. All the same, a CNN Time poll in the U.S. showed that a majority of the people who responded found the UFO story very believable. Conspiracy critic Cal Korff admits, let's not pull any punches here. The Roswell UFO myth has been very good business for UFO groups, publishers, Hollywood, the town of Roswell, and the media. Page 105. Exercise E. Word study. Adjectives with the suffix able. Listen and repeat. Believable. Debatable. Unprovable. Questionable. Page 106. Exercise B. Listen for main ideas. Listen to part one of this true story and discuss the questions. Part one. On October 15, 2009, a shocking news story caught the media's attention worldwide. In the state of Colorado in the western United States, a six-year-old boy named Falcon Heen had somehow taken off in a hot air balloon and was drifting helplessly across the sky. The balloon, which was shaped like a silver-colored flying saucer, was reported to be traveling at an altitude of more than 2,000 meters, and the public was alarmed. Richard Heen, the boy's father, who had built the balloon, said he was handling it when he accidentally lost control and it floated off. When Heen and his wife realized that Falcon was missing, and when Falcon's brother said he had seen Falcon climb into the box that was attached to the balloon, they were very frightened and called for help. Police and TV news helicopters raced to catch up with the balloon while emergency vehicles followed on the ground. Non-stop TV news programs interviewed experts to discuss how to stop the balloon and save the boy. On the Internet, bloggers and members of social networking sites referred to Falcon as Balloon Boy, and their posts were filled with speculation about what had happened. More people used Google to search for Balloon Boy that day than for any other topic, and the events were a source of discussion at schools, workplaces, and dinner tables. The balloon traveled for almost 100 kilometers toward the city of Denver, and the Denver airport was closed down. The balloon finally landed on the ground after having flown for about two hours. But when emergency vehicles got to the balloon, the boy wasn't there. The police searched all over, worried that he may have fallen out of the balloon during the flight. Someone had even reported seeing something fall from it while it was high in the air. News programs reported the events as they happened, and their viewers worried about the boy's fate. But later that afternoon, everyone was surprised to discover that the boy had been hiding in a cardboard box in a room above the garage at his home. 
He said that he had been hiding because his father was angry with him. Everyone was greatly relieved that the incident hadn't ended in tragedy, but instead had had a happy ending. Page 106. Exercise C. Listen to draw conclusions. Listen to part two of the story. Complete the statements. Explain your choices. Part two. After the good news, the family appeared on TV for interviews. On CNN, Falcon was asked why he had stayed in the garage that whole day. Falcon turned to his parents and responded, You guys said that, um, we did this for the show. And on two other programs the next day, when interviewers asked his father about that statement, Falcon got nauseous and vomited on TV, clearly very nervous about the whole affair. News agencies began to be suspicious that perhaps the event had been a hoax after all, and the police and other local government authorities began to investigate. One thing authorities discovered was that the balloon could not have carried the weight of a child, so the claim that Falcon was in it could never have been true. More information was discovered about Falcon's father. He was a storm chaser, a UFO researcher, and thought of himself as a part-time scientist. He had designed the balloon as an experimental model for an alternative type of transportation. He had a strong interest in mysteries and conspiracies. He was also a part-time actor who regularly proposed ideas for new TV shows. For example, one in which he would explore wacky scientific mysteries. He even had an idea for a reality show featuring his own family. Later, Falcon's mother, Mayumi, finally admitted she had known that her son was hiding in their home and that both parents had instructed their children not to tell the truth to the police or news media. Police finally determined that the event had actually been nothing more than a publicity stunt. Richard Heen thought it would help get his family on TV for that reality show. Early estimates placed the cost of the rescue attempt at about two million U.S. dollars. In the end, Falcon's parents agreed to repay $36,000. In addition, Richard Heen spent 90 days in prison, was required to do 100 hours of community service, and had to write a formal apology to the police. Mayumi Heen spent 20 days in prison. The Heens finally sold the balloon for $2,500 and donated that money to victims of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Many people noted that most TV reporters had presented the story as true right from the beginning, even though there were clear questions about whether or not the boy was even in the balloon. Some reported that Falcon had fallen out of the balloon without having confirmed that information either. Some critics also questioned the judgment of providing live TV coverage of the balloon when a six-year-old child could have been seen falling to his death. In the end, many concluded that competition among news agencies to report this moving story caused many to focus on being first instead of getting the story right. Page 108. Review. Exercise A. Listen to the conversations. Listen to each conversation again and choose the statement that is closer in meaning to what each person said. Conversation 1. Where's Bill? I don't know. I haven't seen him. He was supposed to be here an hour ago. He might have overslept. I heard he stayed out pretty late last night. That's what you heard? Yeah, but who knows? Maybe something else happened to him. Conversation 2. Whose wallet is this? Uh, beats me. Well, you were sitting here. Didn't you see anyone come by? Yeah, but I was too busy to notice. I'll bet Gina forgot it. Why would you think that? Well, it's a red wallet, and she always wears red. Hmm, you're that certain. You bet. Conversation 3. Did you read the newspaper today? Uh-huh. Why? Did you read about the latest bank scandal? Sounds like the president is in big trouble now. Yeah, I read about it. But don't you think it's a little premature to claim that the president himself was involved? What? You can't be serious. Where's the evidence? I'll leave everything you read in the paper. Conversation 4. Did you watch the news hour last night? No. Was there something interesting I missed? Oh, yeah. Some guy in Italy says he saw a large, hairy animal that looked kind of like a human eating pasta in the Roman Colosseum. Get out of here. No, for real. 
The guy must have been drinking. Don't be such a skeptic. There are a lot of things out there we just can't understand. Right. And I can't understand how someone so smart could possibly fall for a story like that. Page 108. Test Taking Skills Booster. Listening Completion. You will hear a description. Read the paragraph below. Then listen and complete each statement with the word or short phrase you heard. Listen a second time to check your work. Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, is the most remote inhabited island in the world. Its huge stone figures, called moai, are world famous, but their origin, as well as much of the island's history, is shrouded in mystery. Experts believe the stone figures may have been used to establish religious and political authority and power, but no one knows for sure. Islanders moved a total of 540 figures across the island, some as far as 22 kilometers. Several experts believe the moai could have been walked upright, using ropes to rock the figures back and forth. Others theorize the islanders must have laid the figures down flat and rolled them over logs. They point out that moving each figure could not have been accomplished without the help of 70 or more people and probably took days to achieve. In the early 20th century, Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl noticed cultural similarities between the people on Rapa Nui and the Incas in Peru. He argued that the island might have been inhabited by people who came in boats from South America. To prove it was possible, he successfully sailed a raft called the Contiki on that route. However, experts citing more recent DNA evidence confirmed that the original inhabitants had to have sailed from Polynesia which lies to the west. 